On lap 203, chase contender Denny Hamlin made contact with Kyle Petty. Sparks flew both on and off the track. I watched the bush race and they said he was sick. Um, so I guess the, whatever medicine he's taking makes him hallucinate because he needs three lanes to get around somebody on a racetrack. Let's look at back my career. I've never wrecked anyone my entire career and has anybody spun off my front bumper. So it ain't like, you know, I'm a guy that runs into everybody. I mean, it just got to use your brain. You got to calm down. This is not over for us. Uh, a lot of guys had trouble today and we're going to we're going to bounce back from this. This is uh, just one step of this 10 uh, week chase. Rough day for Denny Hamlin, wrecked with Kyle Petty. Then the two drivers got into a brief skirmish in the garage. Hamlin stuck in 12th place in the standings, effectively ending his bid for a championship. He hammered Petty pretty good after the race. Kyle gets run over a lot, and a lot of the reason is, is he's, he's so far off the pace. You know, and I, and I firmly believe in my heart that he was trying to get out of the way. Um, but you know, I was on the end. I was right there on his bumper on the on the inside of him, and I think he was trying to pull low. And uh, when he did, he, he he checked up to to pull low. Well, I mean, you can't do that when someone's right on you. And I think yeah, that's, that's the reason that stuff happens. I mean, you got a car two seconds off the pace. I guess it's my fault because I watched the bush race and they said he was sick. Um, so I guess the, whatever medicine he's taking makes him hallucinate because he needs three lanes to get around somebody on a racetrack because he just ran all over me. Uh, he was running fifth or sixth or wherever he was running. I'd let the leader by. I'd let the second place guy by, the third place guy. Thought I gave him plenty of room. The next thing I know, he's got me jacked up and turned around. I think a lot of it is the, his frustration over this whole top 35 thing. But, I mean, we're racing for bigger and, and, and better things. So, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, one day if they get it turned around, I, I can exchange the favor. But right now, we're the guys racing for the championship. In the garage, everyone's known it for months. It's not two weeks old. This is something that's been going on for months. They've been worn uh, for a long time, way before Richmond. So this is not something that, oh man, we got, you know, they just told us halfway after Richmond and going in the loud net, our car's wrong. They knew it was wrong way before that, you know, and I felt like they just, they wanted to get everything they could. You know, they, what did they have to lose, really? So, uh, you know, you can't, you almost can't fault them for that. Flash forward to Saturday morning's <laughs> practice. Kevin Harvick, one of the children's drivers, follows Denny Hamlin out onto the racetrack and basically appears to be trying to send a message. He is upset. I don't like what you said, I think, was the message. A little contact, a little more contact, a little more contact out on the racetrack. Both drivers called off the track by NASCAR into the garage where discussion ensued. Boys well, have a little bit of a heated debate <laughs> on uh, territory there. And, you know, it's very difficult when you're making the implication that some Someone else is cheating. Uh, it, it goes to the core. And, and what happened in this incident, as we saw with the fines and penalties, NASCAR has called. Live at Bristol, Tennessee, moments ago, post race, that's Joey Logano. Remember who got bumped by Denny Hamlin going over to Hamlin's car and wanting to talk with Denny about it. You see the crew from the Joe Gibbs team. They were former. Joe Gibbs racing teammates and Michael Waltrip you said that Logano wouldn't take the apology over the radio lightly and the pushing is coming to shoving here. Yeah and we can see what happened. Joey Logano pulled up in front of Denny. Denny said I'm not giving you a break Joey and punts him when he gets down to turn one and two spins Joey around and uh, tempers flared after the race. Hamlin out of line. Hamlin uh, you've got to give and take in this sport. He gave he didn't take. Matt Yoakum is with Denny Hamlin. And Denny uh, I see who's coming for me, so I usually don't see him, so it's usually not a factor. All right, thanks, Denny. Chris? I mean, it's Bristol, but it's it's ridiculous. It's not, um, I feel like I race him clean all the time, and uh, he's going to do that. So uh, I understand the way he races now. That is not my teammate, and I will race him the same way he races me. We have to address it. Kyle Petty making national attention after some comments or a squabble with Denny Hamlin at Pocono. It seems like Denny Hamlin thought, well, Kyle thought Denny said he was the face of JGR, but really he just said he was the face True. of the 11 FedEx team. Take a listen to what Denny had to say. My frustration is Kyle's never showed his face in the garage in 10 years. He's he's an analyst, but it's not a very informative one because he doesn't know anything. So um, I, my, my, my beef with Kyle is he has a lot of opinions about a lot of drivers, but he's never once talked to any of them. So um, you know, you, to be an analyst, you got to be in, in the trenches finding out the stories. I got here on hard work and winning. I didn't get here like he got here. 
Strong there comments. You have it. Yeah, strong comments <laughs> from Denny Hamlin. Kyle Petty just able to let him roll right off your back. Uh, why wouldn't you? I, I mean, at least we know he watches race day, which is great. Thank you, Denny <laughs> Hamlin, for watching race day. Now, when you get ready to talk, use some facts. I have been in the garage area in the last 10 years. I know more about this sport than you'll ever know about this sport. So let's be real clear about that, too. The second thing, or the last thing I'm going to say is this. If you want to have a dialogue, if you want to argue, A, don't go public on Twitter. B, come talk to me. C, have a valid point and don't go personal. Because he just went personal. Just like 90% 90 of the other people on Twitter. Yes, I know I have long hair. Yes, I know <laughs> I rode my dad's coattails. Yes, I know I'm a never was. And yes, I know I suck. I, got, I get that all the time. Uh, well, I, I, let's base this argument in fact. Then the fact of the matter is you don't suck. And we <laughs> loved watching okay. you on the track. <laughs> Things happen so quickly that it's hard to tell until you see a replay, unless it's just you know, definitive there that drivers question uh, exactly what may have happened. Oh, Jamie. Kevin, we saw you frustrated there. What happened? What led to that? I just saw the shit 11 shoot up, um, you know, trying to look like trying to get back uh, at somebody and just call caused a wreck, but um, said that 56 got into him there, so I just wanted to know what happened. All good. Just hate it for my Jimmy John's guys, and, um, you know, track position is such a, such a big deal. Wish we wish we had the old Bristol back. Uh, it's a lot more fun to race on. All right, Kevin Harvick's night is done, and I see Denny Hamlin still sitting in his car, Alan. All right. Of you on the track and change. Michael Annette there slowing down to come to pit road for a pass through penalty. Whoa, oh, contact for the lead. Hamlin into the wall. Oh, and collects another one. That's Junior up in turn one, I believe. Off turn four. You see Harvick trying to get a big run up off the corner. And I believe he just misjudged right there. He thought that, that Hamlin was going to be a little more speed on the exit of the corner there. He was just going to slide up in behind him at that point in time and just misjudged a little whether it was the 11 had to be out the throttle just a little. I'm sure Denny's going to say that he just got turned, that he was wide open. Well, he did. He did get turned, really. I mean, I know that this wasn't intentional by the way yeah. I'm watching it. But. You can see Kevin had Denny Hamlin has faced all year. Uh-oh. As documented, not the first run in at Bristol between Kevin Harvick and Denny Hamlin. Denny, first you're okay, I presume, and uh, what's your reaction to what happened? Well, like, last year he was just not paying attention. He didn't know that I had a cut tire last year, and he just thinks he knows everything and probably thought he knew everything again, and I just wish I had some kind of car left so I could show him the favor back. But, I mean, we're not even halfway. We're racing for the lead. I don't know. Just It's a misjudgment. I mean, he's a good driver. He <clears throat> knows better. He just uh, made a mistake. Thanks, Diddy. What are you doing? Annika, I did Seriously. I did you did the same thing in practice. You did the same thing. I did not you get on my left rear and it spins me out. You did the same thing. Tighten what up? Nobody else left me with a problem out there. Nobody has your back like I have. Stop. Listen to me. I so. But I can't give you an extra two feet because Dude, you give me nothing. You give me nothing. It spun my back end around. I understand. It's because you're loose. It's not my problem if you're loose, Dan. Nobody else did it to me. Nobody else is getting close to you, but we have to get close to you. To get you going forward, I have to get close to you. I know it got you loose. I got you to hit you. Down. Just like I understand. And I looked in my rearview mirror, and you were right here. 
here. You weren't here, you were here. Absolutely. You were loose entering the corner, so you went up the racetrack. Because you were... Danica. Danica. It happened twice. The same person, the same way. But guess what? I didn't hit you either time. Way. I didn't hit you either time. Well, then apparently you don't have to actually hit me. I like you, Denny. You're my friend. I know. You're my, I, I get it. I get it. I, but I, does it mean like, oh my God, she's loose. I can't run next to her. What should it I do? It just means don't be up my <laughs> on my left corner again. So don't get close to you with you three laps to go. You did it in the and then you did it in the corner that time. I Both got times, you. exact same result. I just won't get close to you. I understand now. You can get close. I'm sure everybody gets close. But you don't need to turn me. That's what it did. <laughs> I know it did. All it did was get my back end light, and then it went around. I, I totally get it, but it's something y'all have to work on. Are you doing that with every other car? Hey, I, pu I pushed somebody in the corner. That's you know, two this week, bud. Tony, I never touched her. I never touched her. What do you want me to do? You not run close? You need to watch the video of it. Do you not want me to run close? You just don't need to get I mean, so you know, close that on, it man. turns me. I'm free with you. I know, I like you. I just don't understand that it. Gonna, that ain't going to fly, though. We're crashing. Stewart, of course. In fifth, take a look at this. It looks like the 24 of Chase Elliott. Now you're seeing it. 24 and the 11 having a difference. And you can hear the crowd. Elliott. Once again, so close to his first win in the Monster Energy Cup Series. Denny Hamlin fighting for a spot in the championship four. Just after the checkered flag came out, going down the back stretch, you see the 24 showing his displeasure and how he was raced by Denny Hamlin. It's time to talk about it. Chase Elliott, you wrecked me, clearly. That's what he's saying. Guessing right now, not a lot of them will fit in any of the templates. And you're hearing the crowd in the background. Chase Elliott has become a fan favorite. We heard at Talladega when he took the lead, and the, the crowd erupted almost as if Dale Jr. taking the lead. Let's go down to Dave. Let's get Denny Hamlin's side of the story there. Racing hard for the win here, Denny. What happened? I got in the back of him, and he spun out. Uh, but uh, trying to get uh, trying to get a race win, but you know, it's uh, everybody wrecked everyone there at the end. It was complete, you know, bullshit chaos, and just uh, I got in the back of him, and and he spun out, and somebody got in the back of me, and I wrecked too. It's, it was just it was a mess at the end. I mean, we, no, everybody was doing the exact same thing. Uh, I hated for his team. I understand they're, they're you know had a, a win for a long time coming, but. This is a, a ticket to Homestead, and I'm not sure, you know, I'm not sitting here uh, saying that I wrecked them on purpose, and I uh, tried to move them out of the way and spun out. What did you see rolling into that corner, Denny? I mean, do you feel like he just didn't make the corner and you had too much mo? Well, he didn't make the corner because I had his back end jacked up, that's for sure. Um, but uh, I, I just, I was extremely loose. I got in there too hot, and I got in the back of him. All right, Denny Hamlin with a wrecked race car walks away here, Kelly. You know, he came over and talked to me on the back straightaway, and funny thing was, he said somebody was pushing him, and wasn't two car links between him and the next guy. So, um, my mom always said, "Don't say nothing. You don't have anything nice to say. Don't say anything at all." So, he's not even worth my time. We're gonna go on to Texas. 
What does it mean to hear this crowd as they were booing Denny and now you hear the cheers as they see you on the screen? Well, it's just unnecessary. I mean, we had a, had a clean restart. Brad and I were racing hard for the lead and, and there was no one pushing him into turn three. So I, I wanted to see the replay. That's what I thought happened and that's what happened. And um, it's definitely 100% unnecessary and uncalled for. You've come so close so many times now to winning. How do you wrap your head around losing one this way? Well, I, you know, we had a great car today and, and we had an opportunity, had a good restart there at the end and felt like I was uh, doing what I needed to do. And, um, you know, I, I can't control his his decisions and, and whatever, whatever the hell that was. So uh, on to Texas. Thank you, Chase. Yep. Denny Hamlin has told through his driving actions what he's willing to do to get by a car and Chase Elliott knows exactly what that is. Chase Elliott could return the favor. Once again, closing in on the 11. Chase Elliott all over the back bumper of Denny Hamlin. Both getting in the gas about the same time. Over 130 miles an hour as they enter turn three and bumper goes to the back of the 11 again. Way up the racetrack. Oh, into the wall goes the 11. The 24. Pinch the 11 into the wall. You heard the crowd and now tire smoke coming out of the 11. The fans letting them know what they think about that can lead over Chase Elliott. A seven tenths of a second lead over Martin oh, Jr. And there with the tire. The 11 goes under the wall. And as we saw earlier with the 48s of Jimmy Johnson, that could be the championship hopes going up in. Denny steps out of the infield care center now under his own power. Denny, how would you describe the way that you were raced by Chase? Well, we had a fast car all day. We um, we did we did essentially our job um, all day long. Uh, we put ourselves in good position. Uh, things just didn't work out there at the end. You apologized after Martinsville, Denny. Were you hoping that would prevent something like the racing out here the way it was today? Um, I mean, you know, each person has their own uh, opinion of, of how they do things and, and it just proves to the people that thought I was a bad guy that you know he would do the exact same thing under the same circumstances so I mean you know it's just it's part of racing it's you know I got into him and he chose to retaliate and so I'm in the garage and you know that's the way it is so you know we had a great job we did a great job all day I, I mean this is the best car I've had uh, in a very long time we just got behind on pit stop and then uh, that just gave those guys an opportunity to get close you won't get to race for the championship next week. Will you put some of that on yourself for Martinsville, Danny? Not really. Um, you know, no, I, I won't. But, you know, um, we'll, we'll do the best we can to go out there and win uh, Homestead and uh, make sure our competition doesn't. Glad you're okay. Denny, done for the day, done for the championship. Chase, we saw a lot of hard racing between you and Denny Hamlin there for that position. What are you thinking of Martinsville in that moment? I mean, I'm going to race guys how they race me and keep a smile on my face regardless. So uh, happy to, to race guys how, how they choose to race me, and um, so I see it. All right, Chase Elliott finishes this one second, one spot short of the championship four. I think that's it, right? So close in your first full-time ride for Richard Preddy in the 43 to finish second at the Daytona 500. Yeah, I got so many emotions going right now. Uh, congrats to Austin. Uh, RCR Alliance 1-2, that's pretty good. Um, I want to see the replay before I say anything stupid, but he might need to take some Adderall for that one. But um, all in all, a great day for our uh, click and close Chevrolet Camaro Z01 team. Just uh, an incredible experience for me to be able to um, to be here for my first. What do you time. see in here? Uh, he says I cut his tire down. Looks like the same movie pulled on Blaney at Martinsville, but. Um, Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Come on, I'm talking. I'm fucking talking. There it is again.